Welcome everyone. Going to try doing a little let's play. Who knows how long it will last. <laughs> I haven't really done anything in like two years, but figured to give a little bit of a uh, single player play on Edgewater Saskatchewan. My South Sass modding. Just kinda messing around on it. I uh, made it a little a few tweaks to my liking, so and it's some more paintable stuff to the ground and uh, got rid of some buildings, put some of my buildings on, that type of thing. So, still trying to farm somewhat small scale, and then we'll kind of work our way up as I'd like to get into some more of the bigger farming, because I like playing on bigger maps, bigger farming, but it's kind of nice just to start a little smaller and then work our way up with bigger fleet and stuff like that. So, that's kind of the plan anyway, but... We're using the pickup head, and yeah, it does, it definitely, uh, you get a little fuller for sure. I haven't got it fully working with my PTO hooking up and all that jazz, but. <clears throat> we'll get this guy out of the way. And I probably won't make it very far, and he'll be full again. But hey, I, man, it is kind of cheating because I am getting a pretty damn good yield. <laughs> so, I'll take it. Yeah, the interior is not quite finished on this puppy. Lots left to go, but you know what? And I need to get this header so it quits pushing, but... Mess around with the components, I guess, maybe. I'm not 100% sure what it is. I'm not familiar really much with doing headers and stuff, but at least it's lifted up the ground and I got a decent. Uh, that effect, though, needs to be longer, so I need to go make a custom one because that's as far as I can get that effect to go. So I'll have to make a new one, but. There's not much documentation on that. There is, somebody posted something the other day. I think Giants has posted some stuff for um, effects and stuff like that now. So I'll have to download it what I can and make a new effect for it. Because, yeah, it definitely needs to be coming right from the back. And then it doesn't quite go in. It's kind of just like a partial effect. It's just whatever's on the silage. silage ones. I don't think any headers out there have a bigger effect than that. But I'm not sure. I looked at a few and this is all I could find, so. Yeah, like we're at 84% already. So yeah, she does fill up a little quicker for sure. So maybe we'll only do one field like this. <clears throat> So I think my cart's going to be full as well. It was pretty good, though, getting the Mueller's Swather pack. You just put her on some course play, and away she goes. That's a pretty good job. Although I had bailed this field, and then something messed up. I tried to put back some crop, and I thought that this field was separate from the other two. No, they're all together, so then it re-put wheat down. So that's why there's some bales in my crop, but... I'll need to come get those picked up as well. It's probably the only pickup hitter field we're going to do just because it's... Until we get... Beeler swathing stuff. Because I'm... It's... There's no real way to change it. Because basically the game thinks that I'm like picking up straw. Even though it's converting it back into wheat. It thinks I'm picking up straw. And that... You know the map kind of decides how many uh, leaders are in these swaths, and there's no like that's kind of hard coded in the base game, I believe. Oh, this thing's got a pretty nice fill plane on it. Although it's a little wonky, but I'll take her. 
It's a little bit much for my 800 Fent. Yeah, so C.O. Bueller does it if he's... Because obviously it doesn't fill up as fast. I know if I go on Camille's map with the real numbers, I think he's like changed all the values, so it takes longer for a combine to fill up, but that's because I think he's actually changed like everything's more like similar to real life. So it'd be a little bit different probably on that map too, I would think. Uh, where's all my... Let me bring some of my trucks over here. But this is our yard so far. Nothing real, real special. Kind of tried to pick some different colors on my buildings. Get something different than I normally play with, so... Well, yeah, we'll get some trucks out here. And hopefully we'll get a bin full, since this is the second time I've harvested this field. <laughs> Gonna have a little more wheat in our bin than we maybe should, but I'm okay with that. And this cart, she, this cart's a little slow at unloading. <clears throat> I mean, it's probably realistic. But boy, oh boy, she's slower than anything I've ever used, but that's fine. We'll get this guy to the field for now and get that off <clears throat> have to get a header trailer and stuff for all this stuff later and we'll get her put away in the shed after harvest Well, we'll even try I'm using this truck, I guess. I really would like to um, build a tandem grain truck, but one of these days I'll do one like our farm trucks we use in real life. Some nice Freightliner tandems. Mm. One day. Yeah, we're using uh, Handy MM's uh, Frontier box, which I do have a different grain box, but it doesn't attach for this truck so I have to go see what we have why it's not attaching different attacher joints or something it's funny how you know you can like try and attach stuff but if the attacher joints just named something a little bit different yeah it just does not work we do have another part of the super B trailer but I just figured I'd only pull half for really my trucks aren't go 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 but now with this pickup header yeah we might be <laughs> Even though we're just going right over to here. But now yeah, we're getting a lot of... Getting a lot of grain. This auger kind of situated back. That's kind of how we use it. I You can pull it all the way up like a Rodano would, but... Just kind of a pain in the butt to do that. So I just lay it down and I drive over it. No collision, so that's how I like to play with my augers. And here's my nicer truck. Technically, I'd probably haul grain with the Super B on this truck. This is a little more of a nicer farm truck I mean according to some people they wouldn't have this as a farm truck but there's lots of people here that have like our farm trucks are nice they don't look like pieces of crap uh, we keep pretty good care of all of our trucks it's not a lot of rust on our trucks a lot of stuff's armor guarded like rock guarded and stuff it's we keep nice care of it anyway but yeah, this this uh, pickup header, I'm just going to be constantly running here. Probably. 
And the only thing is I can't hire a worker with that pickup header because it. I think I'm pretty sure, well, I could do the, I could try it on course play, but I think if it's not manually controlled, it will slam the header right in the ground and then it will look goofy and I'd still need to figure out why my header goes into the ground, but like I said, there's probably some collisions not set right and I just come, I've been converting it every farm sim over the next game or the next game and I don't really give it much love so it definitely deserves and these are like the Macdon Massey pickup headers and believe me we had lots of 9560s and we get this header like this this header usually came with the 9565s but our our dealership would buy so many that they just ship them out with some 9560s too you didn't have that that other uh, 4200, you always had the 4300 series. So, I mean, it really doesn't matter. You can use either one. The one that Bueller is making, though, would be a 4200, and that's, that's more what you would have saw on these combines before these 4300 pickup headers came out, and then, like, you, either one works. It's not a huge deal, really. They're, they just look different. I don't, I think they were pretty similar. <clears throat> and yeah we probably won't even make it back to the farm that's how high yielding this header's turning this stuff into but hey at least we'll do a field like this and then we'll go back to the, some honeybees and get some hired help going and <clears throat> our swather can worry about laying some hay down later or something if I don't know if I'm going to do hay this. I guess a little late for that, September. I don't got any cattle, so I'm not going to worry about it for this year. <clears throat> Once I put some feedlots down, then I might start uh, getting into that, getting some feed and stuff for them. Jeez, we're going to be 100% again, yeah. This is going to get a little ridiculous, I think. It's probably the only size of field I want to do. Technically, what we should do is should get the bagger out here. Even though I got bins, we should just have a bagger so I can just unload into the bagger and worry about it later. Yeah, what's this been at? 122,000, I think. I'll oh, save here, I guess. Pretty sure this bin's gonna be full right away. Uh, wrong menu. What did I buy for bins anyway? Oh, that's too bad I couldn't see it there. I think I got. Foremost. I think I got these ones here. No, nope. I got the 620s. Yeah, 144,000 liters. So it's going to be full next truck that comes. It's going to be busy, that's for sure. Uh, I do have bales to pick up. Uh... Why don't we bring another combine out? Yeah! <laughs> uh, sure, why not, eh? <clears throat> See, look at that store picture. That's such a nice store picture. Although it's the wrong room color, but... <sighs> don't have enough money. 
Well, we're we still getting. I guess we'll lease this one. I'm trying to play legitly. Although I probably haven't got enough starting equipment yet, but we'll just take out a loan, I guess, for that. Now, it was quite weird, like this header. I had it scripted one way for a pickup header, and with uh, Maze Plus on, you could attach this header. With Maze Plus off, I could not attach this header, so I had to go in there and switch it back to a grain header or whatever to get it to attach with Maze Plus on. So I don't know what Maze Plus is doing. It's get, being a little finicky, but... And could gotta be down a fair ways for it to pick it up, but might not pick it up yet. Nope. There we go. Oh. We don't want to be dropping a sloth again. <laughs> Well, we're gonna have a lot of weed anyway. It's gonna take me a while just to do this field, which is kind of embarrassing, but is what it is, I guess. <clears throat> and I got some potatoes and some corn. I think I'm gonna switch those fields too. I don't really want to do potatoes at this current moment. I don't really have a nice storage yet built for potatoes, so I don't really want to do them. I guess technically. Well, maybe we'll just do them and we'll just sell them right off the field. Maybe we'll just do that. That wouldn't be the end of the world. See, I got the lights. Uh, FS, FS screenshots of myself. We got. I, I think I had one of them scripted and he scripted the other one. But we have... Basically, as the auger comes out to a certain point, the lights come on. Which technically, they would only do that at night when you have a light switch on in your combine. But I don't think that's possible with FS without a script, like just in the base game stuff. So the light just comes on whenever. So that's kind of what we're stuck with. But I don't mind it. So so this is kind of what we're going to do. This is kind of going to be lame, but... Come over here while that combine's filling this cart, then we'll combine with that combine <laughs> until the cart's full. It's kind of what we're going to be doing, I guess. Normally, I just let the combines go on course play, or course play is not bad. It's usually what I do, but I don't think I. No, I'm not sure. Why I have to jump over here. I have to jump in this combine before he starts unloading, which is, that seems weird to me, but I got too much stuff already. Now, like we don't do much Picking up sauce with barley or wheat now, mainly the reason why you would do this over in our area here is depending on the year, if you get uh, like uh, really wet and part of the crops are stunted compared to others, so you have a lot of green patches than others. Um, for us, for malt barley, it is. Alright, guys, so I want to start off by saying. That I lost the other part of this footage, so there's probably going to be another 10 minutes on this. I know I cut off talking why we use pickup headers, and the other footage, I ran out of space on my hard drive, which I have since then switched it to an external so I can make tons of videos and not worry about running out of space, but I didn't know it at the time. So yes, this first episode is going to kind of be crummy because... I'm kind of have to. I'm kind of having to voice over this last little bit, but I just wanted to explain quickly why we use pickup headers in uh, 
Canada here, and this could be different from any other province, but uh, sometimes when it comes down to like canola, basically we have a couple options. So we can desiccate it, we can, you know, basically mean spray it, dry it down, then harvest it. But with the price of chemicals, sometimes it's cheaper just to not spray it, let it dry down on its own. Um, usually we get a pretty early killing frost, so then the frost does it for us, and then you save money on the spray. And now some years, we don't get that frost, and it takes forever to dry down, and there's a certain point where going in and spraying it is too late. So then you're kind of stuck with kind of having to leave it standing. And there is sometimes another option where we can swath it at about a 70, 65, 70% green we can go in and swath it, and that way, yes, we are going over the swather and using some fuel, but we're saving chemical from spraying it down or from maybe a frost not coming when we want it to and, you know, Christmas time when you're still combining type things. So um, we spray some and we swath some. So that's one reason why we swath the crop and then use a pickup header after. And, yes, you are technically using another machine but sometimes it does save you in terms of cost of spraying it vice versa straight cutting it blah 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 so there is there is definitely benefits to it for sure and same with some other crops like wheat and barley if we do swat it which normally we don't do those ones but say we were gonna have maybe couldn't like i know our malt barley it's illegal to spray it so we you don't desiccate it so you basically combine it tough and there might be a circumstance where maybe we got some weather coming and it's still too tough for us to even put it in our dryer so then we swath it and then if you swath it that day the plant stops and then it dries down much quicker than you just letting it stand. So there is benefits to swathing for sure. And it's not necessarily wasting our time and doing a second, you know, a second pass over it like some people think. So there is a benefit to it. I just wanted to explain that. And I did explain it in my video, but it got cut off. So I had to quickly explain it again. I'm hopefully I kind of covered all the angles for it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this first episode. Um, I got many more. I probably got seven or eight recorded right now. I just have to edit them. And this is the only one where it messed up with recording. So this won't happen again, I hope. So hopefully you guys stay tuned. And between these episodes, the farm changes quite a bit. I mean, I try and hold off, not change it too much. But I like changing and I like constantly changing the way I play. So the fields, the farmyard, you're going to see a massive, massive difference in the coming episodes of buildings I'm swapping out and building more bins and stuff like that so uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and stick around and uh, episode two will be out shortly thank you